So, on to the third and final part of my talk. I said to you in part two that this reading was basically all confession. But at the same time as being all confession, a good chunk of it is also remembrance, which provided the context. We only read the beginning and the end of the chapter today. But in fact, I'm now going to summarise the decent chunk in the middle that we sk skipped over. So if you've still got your Bible open, you might like to want to follow along. It begins with Abram, who's following God, and he was given a promise of a land where his descendants could live. Those descendants were the Israelites, and they suffered in Egypt, so God rescued them through signs and wonders. He met them at Sinai and led them through the wilderness, even though they were unfaithful and they worshipped a golden calf. God gave them the land of Canaan, which has cities and fertile land, and even so they rebelled against him, and so he let them be defeated by their enemies. When they were oppressed, God returned and rescued them. But when they were at rest, they forgot him and turned away from him. So he sent prophets to them, and when they didn't listen to the prophets, he sent foreign nations to rule them. But because of God's great mercy, he never entirely abandoned them or allowed them to be wiped out. This is the story of God's relationship with his people over that time. It spanned about 1500 years, from Abram, through 400 years in Egypt, and about 800 years in the Promised Land, before, before the Northern Kingdom was taken away, and then subsequently the J Judah in the Southern Kingdom. But what is the point of rec recounting all of that in this chapter? Well, it's because we are forgetful people. And that was true of the Israelites then, and it's still true of us now. We get sucked into the pressures of the present and our worries about the future. And so we lose sight of God and we forget all the goodness he has shown us in the past. And as we fail to remember, we forget God's faithfulness towards us and his love. We forget that his moral laws are given to lead us into a fullness of life, not to arbitrarily restrict our choices. And as we forget and we stop trusting God, it's when we stop trusting him that we're liable to turn away to other gods, to the pagan idols that are still offered to us in our society today, gods of money and sex and fame and power. Now exile was a tactic of conquest designed to make people forget. Ancient empires had often used this tactic by taking away people away from their homeland and immersing them in an alien culture in order to make them forget. And as they forgot, they would forget their identity as a people group and they would forget the religion that went with that. We face a similar immersion here now in our liberal, capitalist, secular state. And it has nothing to do with the COVID pandemic. We might be lulled into a false sense of security by the fact that no one has conquered us since 1066. But the fact is that Britain is not now a Christian nation, if indeed it ever was one. As I mentioned in part one, as Christians, we are exiles here in the world. And of course, there is much that is good and Christian about the structures of our society now and the morals that we have. But there are also many currents that are taking us in a different direction, trying to give us a vision of humanity and a vision of the good life which is opposed to what God has shown us in the Bible. We must not forget, we must continue to remember the truth of where we are and where we are going. For the Jews in exile, remembrance wasn't just nostalgia for times gone by, it was a survival strategy to get them through to times with God in the future. The Jews in exile in Babylon maintained the memory of who they were and who God was by meeting together, to study God's word and to tell stories of their faith. For us too, it is essential to prioritise fellowship, particularly in this time of pandemic, when fellowship is perhaps more difficult than it might otherwise have been. Even if the only thing you can get to is a YouTube service or a Zoom meeting, 
we must continue to obey the command that was written to the to the Hebrews in the New Testament. Do not neglect meeting together. The exilic Jews had another tactic too. They built remembrance into the very structures of their lives by observing the feasts and festivals that God had commanded in the law, such as the Feast of Tabernacles, which we talked about earlier. Now that's something the church has continued to do with our seasonal festivals like Christmas and Easter. But seasonal remembrance of God is not enough to keep us walking day by day in his truth. We need patterns of weekly Sabbath and daily prayer and even more frequent time remembering God in order to let the Spirit of God do his work in our lives to help us remember in every moment, at every decision, what is the right path, what is the way to go, who we love, where our priorities lie. The title of our service this week is Godly Priority. I am convinced that the, the disciplines of confession and remembrance are essential to keeping our priorities aligned with God's. This is as true now in our current state of exile as it was for the exiles who lived in Nehemiah's time 2,400 years ago. So to round off my talk now I'm going to ask you one final question. What do you most want to remember from today's service? And when you've thought what that is, then write it down and return to it this week as you meet with God and other believers.